In the first Castle Learning series video, I showed you how to set up your classes. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to create an assignment and then how to actually give that assignment out to your classes. Um, I'm already signed in here, you'll see. Um, we're looking at my Teacher Center page. I'm going to assume that you already know how to do this because that was covered in the first video. Again, if you're having any problems with that, you're not sure what your username and password are, you can contact me directly, you know, email me, uh, or you can put in a sysaid and they'll make sure you've got an, uh, uh, an account that way too. Um, so in the last one we went into this classes tab and that's where we were working to set up our classes. This time we're going to go into the assignments bar here. So I'm just going to double click on that and when I do it's going to take me here. Now um, starting from the top down you'll see that right now it's in course US history and government that's because that's the last course that I created an assignment for so it, it remembers that. Um, so if I click on that down arrow you'll see these are all of the subjects all the areas that there are databases in CASA Learning already set up for uh, which is pretty much anything and everything we teach. Um, so I had mine set as U.S. History and that's the one I'm going to leave that as right now and again most of these work exactly the same way I'll, I'll tell you when we get there in a second that there are a couple differences but again most of them you'll be able to figure out based on what I'm going to show you if there are any differences what you need to do. Um, assignment folder this is just if you want to if you start building up lots and lots of assignments and different types and all that stuff you can actually organize them into folders I'm not that organized so I'm just going to leave that as any folder. The next thing is we see these tabs. This one is the assignment tab. So all this stuff that you see underneath this is on, in the assignment tab. I could use this whole assignment stuff that I'm going to show you. Instead of creating an assignment from a, a database, I could create a set of, of flashcards. So if I've got vocabulary that I want students to go through, um, I can use this to, to create that instead. But that's probably for another video. So I'm, I'm going to stay in this assignment tab. The first thing I need to do once I'm when I'm getting ready to create it is I need to give the assignment a name so this one I am just going to call review of the three branches of government okay and again you can always rename it later so I don't get too hung up on that um, I could I should show you before I, I move on but um, this is to create a brand new assignment from scratch. I could take a little bit of a shortcut too and I could create an assignment from public assignments. And what that means is that when I create my assignment I can choose to make that public and that means that other people like anyone that has Castle Learning could have access to that too. So if I'm pinched for time um, I, I just want to start you know not from square one I can go into that public assignment database too and based on the names go through and find something that might be likely and then I can I can always modify it or whatever but I'm I'm gonna show you right now how to create one from scratch so I've got it named I know I'm gonna be doing a US history review on the the, the three branches of government uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and click the button that says create new assignment now what you're gonna be seeing here is the US history database Okay, and I know that because there's the, in blue it's showing you that I'm in the US history database I could actually even now I could come in here and I could go to a completely different subject area I could add some questions from math or ELA if I wanted to uh, I, I can also switch so if I wanted to throw a couple global questions maybe about the enlightenment in there I could go pull some from the global regions as well uh, I'm going to leave it as US history it asks me what kind of questions do you want um, so, for instance, the, the choices here are um, multiple choice and constructed response, which we, would be like the, the scaffolding questions from a, a, um, a DBQ. I'm just going to be looking at multiple choice questions to keep things simple for now. How do you want to filter this? I want to filter by topic, which is what we're seeing down here because it's going to be easier for me to find. But if you're getting to the end of the year or you want to make sure that you're hitting certain standards, you can do that instead you could search for questions by standards or by levels by a certain vocabulary you know and pick questions that way I'm just gonna leave it as topics now um, here's where I mentioned a minute ago that things are a little bit different depending on the database this is the, the US history one of the reasons I picked this to do this assignment or the, this video with is the US history database is pretty well set up it's pretty well organized they have it you'll see that the, the topics themselves are broken into broad 
ranges of time, so constitutional foundations, colonization through the Civil War, and so on. And then if I hit the button to expand that, you can see that they have it broken down even further, okay? Um, makes it easy. Uh, the global database, on the other hand, is not nearly as good. I wish they would get somebody to take a look at that because they're broken up a lot more broadly. So basically it's like, do you want a question on European history? And if so, then here's a lot of questions to look at. So this is, this is much nicer. Um, you'll notice I've already gone in here and I was looking at this ahead of time. So I took the, the database and I said, I already know that I'm going to be wanting to look at branches of government, cross-study, uh, legislative, executive, and judicial. So I've checked those boxes. And if I hit this button down here that says Save Choices and Update Count, what that's going to tell me is how many multiple choice questions fall into those topics. So there are 240 multiple choice questions that fall into those topics. If I take one of them away, so let's take this one at the top away, the cross-study one, and do Update again, you'll see that the question count drops to 195, okay? Once I've decided how many or what, what categories exactly I want, so I'm just gonna leave it at that, then the next thing I do is I come over here and the button says save choices and show me questions. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit that. Now what we see up here at the top is, first of all, this key, and this key shows you um, that you know, here are the question types, and most of this stuff are, are things that we're not going to be paying attention to because I'm, I'm already in the high school database, so all this elementary, middle stuff. So the really the only ones I'll be seeing will be high school basic, high school intermediate, high school advanced, and maybe some AP, um, maybe. Um, although I don't think there are too many of those in there. The where the, where that shows up is, let me clear that off of here for a second and scroll down just a little bit. Um, if you look at a question, for instance, here's uh, this one about the provisions of the Constitution. Um, it gives you the correct answer, okay? It gives you the, the ID, which you don't need to pay attention to. But here's where that level shows up. So this one is level J, which now let me clear that off again and scroll back up since I scrolled too far. And we can see that level J is considered a basic question, okay? Um, so that's kind of nice if you're, you're trying to get a nice mix of some sort of easier recall questions and then maybe some more advanced critical thinking questions. Um, once you're done with your assignment, it'll actually show you a breakdown of, of how many of these types of questions, how many of this level, how many of this level that you put in. Now all you have to do is literally just scroll through this list of questions, read the questions, and figure out which ones you want. So yes, I want that one, um, I want that one, I want that one, and so on, okay? There are, are 195 questions, remember. I'm only, it's set up right now to show me 100 questions per page. I can change that to see fewer than 100, but I've left it on 100. Um, when I'm done with this page, I can go on to the next page. Okay, until I get through all 195 questions if I need to go that far. Um, the other option that you have is up here at the top you'll see number of questions that can be added. Okay, um, And it says add randomly selected questions. Maximum number of questions to add right now in this box it says 20. So what I could do if I wanted to, and it, by the way the reason that says 97 is because you can the, the most you can have in a CASEL learning assignment is 100 questions. So I've already picked three so this is saying, well, you, if you want, we can pick more random questions to add to this to get you wherever you want to. Um, and if I left that as 20 and I just went ahead and um, hit this button to add them, it'll randomly pick 20 of the questions that I haven't checked and add those to my assignment. Um, might be kind of handy if you're just quickly trying to put an assignment together uh, or, for instance, if you want to use Castle Learning as a pretest. You know, technically we're not supposed to put our own pretests together. So you could, if you wanted to mimic, say, a Regents exam, I could have, instead of just checking those specific topics, I could have left the, the one main topic up at the top checked, which was just U.S. history. So it would have been thousands and thousands of questions in the database, and I could have said, give me 50. You know, give me 50 random multiple choice questions, and it would have picked 50 random multiple choice questions to put that together for me. Um, so 
anyway, let, let's say that I go down through here and, uh, and I have however many questions I want to get added in, 20, 25, 50, whatever it is, okay? And I've gone through all my questions and looked and, and checked off the ones that I want. Once I'm finished, I need to come back up to the top of the page and I need to click on this red button that says done. And when I do that, we're going to get a little screen while it's thinking for a second. And then it's going to show me, you know, here I can see that I've got three questions in the assignment. And it's going to tell me, you know, I can look at each one of the questions. I can see what the answer is. Um, one of the nice things about this, especially if you have students who have IEPs and have tests read, um, they can actually, when they're going through and taking the test, they can click on these buttons if they're sitting at a computer with speakers or headphones. And it, it will read the question and read the choices to them. So that's kind of nice. Um, from here, though, our next step is once we've got these questions together, and we, if, again, all this stuff, I know I'm kind of rushing through it, but I want to get this stuff out there. You can modify the assignment. So if I realize at this point that, shoot, I didn't only mean to put three questions and I meant to have 20 total, so I need to go back in, I can modify the assignment, go in and add more questions. Um, some of the options, there are different options to add more questions, remove questions, reorder them, all that stuff. So there, there are a number of things that I can do right here before I go any farther. Let's say, though, for the sake of argument, that I've got my 20 questions that I want for this review quiz for them, and I'm good and I'm ready to go. Um, I could handle it a couple different ways. One is, I could print this out now. If I want a paper copy of it, so I want to give this as a paper quiz, uh, I can go ahead and, and print it out right from here. Okay. The other option, though, is, since we took the trouble already of setting up our classes in the last video in Castle Learning, uh, I can assign it to students, and that's what I'm going to do. So I click the link that says Assign to Students, and I didn't. I clicked the wrong one. I went back to the assignment page, but that's okay. <laughs> because now I'll show you there's the other way to do it. Here's the assignment that I just created, Review of the, the Three Branches of Government. So let me check that box so I know that's the one I'm dealing with. And I want to assign that to students. All right. And it's asking me, okay, what class do you want to assign this to? And I want to first, I'm, I know I'm going to give it to first and second period, but I'm going to go to them. It'll ask you, do you want to assign it to yourself? That's how you can, if you want to, you can run through it and see how it looks to the students, see exactly how things are presented to them. Um, I'm going to come over here and scroll down, and I'm going to check all. I could go through and check each one of those individually, but if I just click the check all link at the bottom, checks all of them because I know I want to give it to the whole class. Now I have some options, and th the first option that I need to decide on is the mode. And there are three options. There's open mode, quiz mode, and offline mode. And if I just put my mouse over that little question mark button, it will eventually here. It should and it's not going to. I bet you if you're on your home computer it will do this. We're having some weird stuff with Internet Explorer at school at the moment, but um, if you mouse over that, it'll tell you what each of the, one of those things means. And what open mode means is exactly what you would think it is. Um, they can read the question, they pick an answer, and if they get it wrong, and this is the reason why I kind of like open mode, is if they get it wrong, Castle Learning will tell them you got it wrong, and here's a hint. Here's something you want to think about. So it might define a vocab term, or it might say, you know, you might want to think about this, or give them a little synopsis of something. And then they have the option of trying the question again. Um, if they, they answer, if, if you use it on open mode, when you go into the reports, which I'll show you in another video, when you go into the reports, you'll still be able to see for each question did they get it right the first time? Did they get it right when they they corrected it? Or did they not get it correct? So you can still, you can leave it on open mode and still break it down and see, you know, what did this kid get as far as a grade? Quiz mode is exactly what you would think. You get one shot, that's it. They don't um, necessarily, you know, there's no hints, nothing. It's just one time through. Um, offline, you really don't need to worry about that. Most of us are going to be using one of those two modes. Availability options pretty self-explanatory. Always means the second I hit this assign button down here, if a kid happened to be logging into Castle Learning, they'll be able to do it right now and it'll be available always until I manually come in and close that assignment, which I can do. 
so you know a week later I could come back in and say yeah we're all done with that so I don't need to leave that open anymore so I could close it off the other option is to actually specify when I want it to be available so I could say I want this available starting um, tonight at midnight and I want to close it off uh, say let's say it's due Monday during class at the beginning of class so I'll have it you know Monday at 8 o'clock will be the cutoff time um, I can specify any time the third option is timed and timed is exactly what it sounds like when they log in how much time do they have once they start answering questions how long do they have before they are shut off you know no matter where they are in the quiz um, for simplicity's sake and for my you know for what I like to do I'm gonna leave it as always um, you know I, I, I've, I've played around with both the, the from and to and I don't know I it's kind of a personal preference thing but I just find this is easier number one and number two like I said if I want to close it later on I can always come back in and do that additional options randomized question order so if you're gonna be doing this in say a lab setting where you're gonna be using it as a quiz you might want to do randomized question order because that way if you've got two kids sitting side by side they're not necessarily on the same question at the same time um, the next option down is to disable read speaker text-to-speech um, again as I mentioned before students can actually have the questions read to them you can disable that if you want to I've never found a, a need to do that I guess maybe if you were going to do castle learning in a lab and didn't want them all having different questions right at the same time you might want to do that but again I don't really see the need to do that auto lock questions that just has to do with once they've gone past a question not letting them go backwards again for simplicity's sake and for usually what I find necessary I'm just gonna leave all that stuff as open leave it always open and not check any of that stuff so I've got all my students from my first period assigned to this so I go ahead and click assign so now you'll notice that when I come back up and here's my review of the three branches it's only got three multiple choice questions in it um, and you'll see that there are 25 students in the class that I assigned and it's it's telling me here how many students completed it so you'll notice that um, for instance my last assignment kids did not do real well the motivation factor was down there a little bit so we had constitutional roots and principles quiz that was due um, last or earlier this week rather and um, out of 52 students that were assigned only 29 of them did it so we're having some talks about that uh, but anyway now I can go back in remember I said that I want to give this all to also to my second period class so I'm gonna go in real quickly and I'm gonna do exactly the same thing I did before so I'm going to assign this again this time it's telling me first period all students are already assigned this I could change these options now if I decided you know what I do only want it open from a certain time to a certain time I could come in and change any of these things at this point but I'm going to use the drop down menu and I'm going to pick period two and now I'm going to do exactly the same thing I'm going to check all to select all the students um, I'm going to leave the same settings that I did for first period and I'm going to click assign so now you'll see that I've gone up to 51 students that have been assigned to that particular quiz um, real quickly because I know I'm pushing time here and I, I don't want to make you sit through anymore but if for instance you'll notice that this is this is obviously not really the quiz that I want to give these kids because it has only three questions if you make a mistake and you decide that a, a quiz is not what you want there are a couple things that you can do one is if I hit the pencil button over here I can edit this assignment even once I've assigned it I can edit this assignment I can go back in and I could add more questions let's say though I decide I don't I, I want to get rid of this quiz like I really I didn't mean to give them this one I just want to start over from scratch the problem is if you see in the the column over here where it has actions all of the, like some of these have a little trash can which would let me delete that assignment you'll notice that our assignment that we just created does not and that's because it's been assigned to a student and if I look down here in this list you'll see that the the delete action it says only unassigned assignments can be, be deleted so I can't delete that assignment because it's already been assigned to students so this takes a, 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 a kind of extra step here so what I need to actually do is I'm gonna have to come in here and I'm going to have to um, go to assign this and th 
this is the tab where I could be assigning students just like I did before. I, I, you know, if I had another class that I want to assign this to, I can do exactly the same thing here. But what I want to come to is the, the tab that says assignment results. And this, this is tricky because it doesn't really make a, a lot of sense. Uh, but what I want to do is, I know I'm in my three branches assignment. I'm going to go back to period one and there are all the students that have been assigned this. I'm going to check all and then right down here it says unassign and it's going to ask me are you sure you want to do this because if I if I've had students who actually already did the assignment at this point if I unassign it it's going to erase those results so that's why it's it's gonna ask me again are you really sure because again it doesn't want you to lose data if you've already collected that um, I know nobody's done it, so I'm going to go ahead and clear that out, and I'm going to clear it off of second period two. So same thing, I'm going to check all, and I'm going to unassign. Yes, yes, I'm sure. Okay, now I can go back to my assignment list. And now, when we look at review of the three branches of government, you'll notice that over here in the action column, our trash can is here. That's because we have zero students that, it, that have been assigned to that particular assignment so I'm gonna go ahead and hit the trash can and say yes and you'll notice that it was asking me like are you you better be sure you want to do this because it can't be undone there there is no unlike like in Microsoft Word or something like that there is no undo button on that one so once you delete a, an assignment it is gone so same thing with a class if you de de delete a class that class is gone so just um, if it pro pops up a warning window just make sure you really read that before you click OK uh, so that's it. it. It really is as simple as that, to how to get those assignments out there. Um, what I'll do in the next um, video is I, I will talk about reports and I'll talk about how to actually get your, um, the, the data from your, your um, assignments. And actually as I'm sitting here talking I'm realizing there's one other key piece that I should make sure I tell you and that is how do you actually tell students um, what assignments they need to do or how do the students themselves get in so let me back up and just as a reminder because I did show you this in the first video um, but the way that you would find that out and make sure that they know is remember if we look at the class management screen and here are all my students in first period there's their username, their, their login ID, and as I said in that first video, if they've never logged in before, they just leave the password field blank, log in, and it'll give them the option or tell them they have to create a new password. When, let's say that I assign this and Sarah, when she logs in next time, and on her um, screen when she logs in, she's gonna see that you have a new uh, uncompleted assignment uh, for Mr. Dalton. So she'll be able to click on that and it'll take her right in and she, it'll ask her do you want to start this assignment and and she can go ahead and get to work. So that's it. As I was saying in the next video I'll go ahead and show you how to uh, use the, the report functions as a teacher to get some information, some data out of your assignments once you've completed them. So thank you for watching.